Cuba. Well, we don't go to Cuba. Oh, you don't so go to Cuba? Okay. So, they do. Uh, so I, I can't. I know they, they send doctors yeah. all over the world, yeah. and I know they, they sent they sent many yeah. uh, medical. Yeah. Disaster. They did a lot with Hurricane Mitch. Right. Yeah. They sent, uh, and they do educate doctors. I remember some of them in Latin America who were in Cuba to get educated. But they sent a lot of doctors to uh, when people hate it. Right. That's what. Yeah. And don't uh, often get credit for but, it. Um, but we're normally, we, we have nothing to do with the government. You know, really, we're isolated from the government. But in some cases, in these small communities where we work, we know the mayor, and, but we don't give him any money. But we work with him, so we do work with the mayor. Some you can work with. Uh, I'm sort of on the same wavelengths. Um, I noticed though, my um, like Costa Rica and Belize and stuff, that um, is it because they've never asked for help? Because Costa Rica is a little Switzerland of Central America. That's, that's the main reason. And Belize, I don't know, but it, probably Belize, there's poverty in Belize, I'm sure. I was just curious. Do you think there is? Oh, I don't know. Oh, but there probably is. But, um, but no, we didn't touch Costa Rica because of that. Because, and they have a good health system. Oh, yeah. very good. Actually, um, El, Salvador, El Salvador does, you know, um, but there's a lot of complaints about um, the local health, even though they have benefits that they have to wait so long. And the, and the public, like the clinic, um, what's it called? Um, Caridad or something in, in uh, Charity Hospital in Honduras. Sometimes I get the, the, the countries confused because I think no. Um, and there they have to wait all day, you know, and they have to come back. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you had plans or had worked in South America as well. My we daughter did have, was Colombia. Yeah. There's a lot of work. We did have um, at this point. I think we're you know stretching too much. Um, we had a, a couple of students that we sponsored out of uh, um, Caracas, Venezuela. We did. Uh, sponsor too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was sad because we didn't really have anybody on the ground to, to monitor the students. You really need someone on the ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the, the girls, um, for some reason, she didn't make it and um, she didn't continue her studies. But I found out later from the woman that referred them that she did come back and finish. Mm -hmm. So they do. I mean, if, if you just give them a start sometimes, you know, they, and that's the only way that they can break the chain of poverty is, is, is education. Do you work mostly with girls and women, it seems like, in your picture? No, no. The students are male and female. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and right now, the empowerment program, they have young boys now in that, the one in Panama. And, um, and where else? I guess they are. So no, we, we work with both. Um, and, and the thing is with education, they have to have the facility, but they have to have the brain to even be educated. So girls are pretty smart. And that's what they say. That you, uh, you want to educate more girls. You should. Um, I want to thank all of you for coming. I want to thank Lillian for her presentation. And I, I just want to, want to end you. by saying that I wouldn't have become a nurse without a scholarship coming from there a very poor place there myself. So, you know, I'm living proof that it's worth it. To <laughs> <put on. laughs>
area of churches is that you're very active. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. You're active and you get involved in social issues. No. Because I was so impressed with the Tucson people, what they're doing with no more weapons, no more death. It just hit me. And so that's why I support them. I mean, came from immigrant families.